month or so ago, I led a walk for the Church's Connections Group. That's a group for those who have retired but are seeking to remain active. And there were nine of us who went on the walk. So we had to um, divide into two groups, two smaller groups, in order to follow the rule of six. And I led the first group and Christine Sweeting led the second. And it was a lovely walk full of interesting places on the route, varied countryside and all uh, taking place in beautiful sunny weather. Uh, luckily, a good two weeks before Storm Alex dumped all that rain as much as filled, could fill Loch Ness. We started from Dunsfold, close to the Sun Inn. And then we walked across country in the direction of Hambledon. And the first place we came across was the church, Dunsfold Church, St Mary's and All Saints, uh, and this attractive lich gate uh, at the entrance. And uh, inscribed inside it is, is uh, the fact that it's a memorial to Queen Victoria put up in 1901, just after she died. And as we walked along, the conversations between us flowed thick and fast. So much so that I'm afraid to say the leader of the first group managed to overlook a right turn. Uh, and uh, it took a little while before we realised what had happened and retraced our steps, only to find that group two had managed to take the lead. It wasn't long before we encountered our first style. Now, styles can cause considerable problems for those who are a good way into retirement, however active they may want to be. And of course, wobbly styles are worst of all, and this one was one of those wobbly ones. Well, we all managed to get over it, but no sooner had we got over than we came across these pigs who seemed just as interested in us as we were in them rushing up to the fence. And they were just two of the many farm animals we saw that day. Not long after that, we arrived on the outskirts of Hambledon beside this, beside a wonderful uh, Victorian house called Van, which each year opens its gardens to the public and raises money for charity. I have a particular interest in Van because six years ago my daughter was married and we had uh, part of the reception inside Van Gardens and it holds a lot of blessed memories for me and for Nikki. Then we headed, off, headed back in the direction of Dunsfold, passing through more lovely countryside and great views. When we were about half a mile from the car park, we came across this village pond, graced by swans and cygnets. And of course, not far away on the road, there was the sign that said, beware swans crossing. At the end of our journey, uh, the Swan Inn wonderfully were able to provide us with a delicious lunch in their outdoor tented facility. We all kept our social distance and in fact we were in the, we seated in the same groups as we walked. And that was when I told the group that the name Connections was now doomed. It seems that Wanash Parish Council have uh, created a new website which they've called Wanash Connections. And there's been quite a bit of confusion from people uh, looking for that and ending up on our church website. Now, normally I'm not very good at thinking of new names for things. They, uh, they just don't seem to occur to me, but on this occasion, a name did drop into my head. And it was all to do with one of my Old Testament heroes, a man called Caleb, who was apparently one of only two of those who crossed the Red Sea with Moses, who finally made it to the Promised Land 40 years later. Just a touch longer their journey was than our Dunsfold walk a month ago. About a year into their journey, the Israelites pitched camp quite close to the land that God had in mind for them. And they sent 12 spies into the land to see what it was like. And Caleb and Joshua were two of those 12 spies. 
and they found that it was a wonderful place, full, uh, flowing with milk and honey, as it says. This little picture shows the Israel Tourist Agency today, their logo. And it's all because of this verse from the book of Numbers. It goes like this. When they reached the valley of Eshkol, they cut off a branch bearing a single cluster of grapes. Two of them carried it on a pole between them, along with some pomegranates and figs. But 10 of the 12 spies gave an extremely negative report on the land, saying that it was populated by fearsome giants and the Israelites would be no match for them. The other two who didn't vote that way were Caleb and Joshua, and they urged the people to trust in God, who would easily be able to overcome the giants. But what they said was ignored. And it was years later, many years later, before they finally crossed the River Jordan and began to settle in the place that God had prepared for them. After Moses died, Joshua became their leader, with Caleb as his right-hand man. And in Joshua chapter 14, Caleb, who's now an old man, makes a powerful speech about God's faithfulness to him. He recalls how uh, back in the time of the spying trip, Moses had spoken to him using these words. The land on which your feet have walked will be your inheritance and that of your children forever, because you have followed the Lord my God wholeheartedly. And then Caleb finished his speech with these words. Just as the Lord promised, he has kept me alive for 45 years since the time he said this to Moses in the wilderness. So here I am today, 85 years old. I'm still as strong today as the day that Moses sent me out. Now, I don't think that any of us walking around Dunsfold had yet reached 85, but maybe some of us were not too many years shy of that target. Nevertheless, the name Caleb Group seems like a good one to replace the previous name. I recently reread a chapter from a book I've got about Caleb, a book by Oswald Sanders, and in it he provides a taster um, uh, of what happened uh, in the wilderness. And this is what he wrote. Caleb provides us with a glorious conception of the possibilities of old age. His supreme opportunity came when he was 85 years old. To him, his later years were not about petering out, but still embracing adventure and achievement. And Sanders went on, are we losing our desire for spiritual adventure, becoming hesitant to risk a step of faith for God? We can take courage from Caleb. The best still lies ahead. That's why I think the Caleb group is such a good name for us. And do get in touch with me if you reckon that the Caleb group is one that you'd like to join. James at wanishchurch.org.uk